Welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast, made for women who want their healthiest years to be ahead of them, not behind them. Join your host, Courtney Townley, right now as she breaks down the fairy tale health story you have been chasing all of your life into sensible action steps and lasting change. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast. This is your host, Courtney Townley. As always, I am so deeply grateful that you're here. I don't know where in the world you're listening from today, but here in Northwest Montana, spring has sprung, (laughs) and I am so here for it. I'm so ready for it. I think it's going to be 82 degrees today at the beginning of May, which is just awesome, and I hope that your weather patterns are treating you equally as well. Now, I mentioned this in last week's episode, but I want to mention it again today, that next week, the week of May 10th, I am hosting a free one-hour workshop on three different dates to really help women reimagine what health is and the pathway that will help them to create a state of deep health. So this workshop is called Women's Health Reimagined, and it really gives women a great understanding of how the work I do in the world is so radically different from a lot of what is out there in terms of women's wellness. And most importantly, I'm going to be giving you a lot of strategies and tools for helping you to improve your own health journey. Because the truth is, health is so much bigger than physical health. I know that's the physical health conversation seems to be the conversation we get so hyper-focused on. And of course, it's important. But we can't attain physical health by dismissing all the other dimensions of health. So we're going to be talking really about health from a very holistic perspective. And we're going to be talking about tools and strategies that are way outside the box of the diet and exercise conversation that, again, our culture seems so hyper-focused on. Diet and exercise are hugely important. They are a very big part of the uh, path to improving health. But there are a lot of things missing in those two conversations. And so I'm going to touch on what is missing in this workshop. So if you are a woman who is really ready for a better way to improve your health, a kinder and more grace-filled path, and above all, a way of improving health that you really feel confident you can sustain. I would highly encourage you to register for this workshop. And you can do that by going to graceandgrit.com forward slash reimagine. Once again, that's graceandgrit.com forward slash reimagine. So like I said, the work that I do in the world to help women up-level their health and happiness is really unlike anything out there. And maybe a lot of health coaches say that, I don't know, but I really deeply believe that I the work that I do is so different because it isn't exclusive to physical health and it isn't exclusive to the diet and exercise elements that our culture seems so hyper-focused on as being the linchpins to health. So this workshop is going to give you a glimpse into all the ways in which that is true. Now, I know for many, many women, and myself included, for many years, I was also in the space of feeling like health was so complicated. And complicated freaks out our brain, right? It makes us not want to do anything. Because we are already living very full, very busy, very hectic lives. And complicated just feels like a lot of extra work when we don't even have a lot of extra resources to give. So I want to offer you today to consider what if health wasn't complicated? What if improving health really boiled down to focusing your attention 
on developing one thing. Because I believe it can be that simple. What is that one thing? Well, in my world, that one thing is integrity. I want you to consider that developing a practice of staying in integrity with yourself is the answer to improving health in deep, powerful, and sustainable ways. Health is really a practice of integrity, which those of you longtime listeners have heard me touch on many times before throughout the past 240 episodes. (laughs) I teach as a coach from the perspective that health is a byproduct of integrity. So I want to break that down for you a little bit today. And if you're excited by what you hear and it is landing for you, do not miss the Women's Health Reimagined Workshop next week, because we'll take this to a whole nother level. So we'll start the breakdown by defining what integrity is. So Wikipedia defines integrity in two different ways. The first definition is the practice of being honest and showing a consistent and uncompromising adherence to strong values. So let's just dissect that one definition. The first part, integrity is a practice of being honest. If you want to improve your health, you will have to get brutally honest with yourself. And to be honest with yourself, you have to be willing to take a very close look at not just what you're doing, but also why you do the things that you do. In other words, it's not enough to simply change behaviors. Why do I say that's true? Because what drives our behavior? How you think, your mindset, your beliefs. So if you aren't doing mindset work, if you aren't developing new beliefs about yourself and what's possible for your life, whatever actions you take to create an outcome will be short-lived. Because what happens in your brain, (laughs) the thoughts you think every single day ultimately are what are driving your behavior. So it makes a whole lot of sense that we start to understand the thought patterns, the belief systems that are driving our behaviors. And this always makes me think of the construction industry. A lot of you may know that my husband is a builder. And so we have a lot of construction conversations. And one of the things that he comes up against a lot with clients is a client will hire him to renovate something like a kitchen. And they're so excited because, come on, a kitchen renovation is exciting. You get to, right, put in new flooring and new cabinets and a new stove and maybe all new appliances. I mean, it really can radically transform the space. But the transformation is surface level, meaning if you don't address the foundation of the kitchen, and things that are happening under the floorboards and behind the walls, that transformation of the kitchen may not stay in that new state for very long. So what happens is he'll pull up a floor in a kitchen and start to see that, oh, wow, right? There's some mold here that needs to be addressed. There's some floorboards that need to be replaced. There might be some leaky pipes. There might be some rodent infestation. So there are things at the foundational level that have to be addressed before he gets to the really aesthetic fun stuff, which is transforming the look of the kitchen. And hear me out. I totally get it. (laughs) It is way more fun to focus on aesthetics 
than it is to go in and look around at the deeper stuff that ultimately created some challenges on the surface level. In other words, it's I know it's not all that fun to go in and look at our belief systems and the reason that we behave the way we do. But it's so necessary to creating a sustainable outcome. So the real work of our health is not at the aesthetic level. The real work of our health is taking a look at the foundational elements. What do you believe about yourself and what's possible for your life? How do you manage emotions? Do you even manage emotions? Is the way you're currently managing emotions actually healthy and useful? Because for a lot of people, it isn't. A lot of women are feeling stress, and so they manage their stress by drinking alcohol. A lot of people are feeling lonely, especially after a year like COVID. And to manage their loneliness, they're eating. So how do you or don't you cope with emotion? That's a really important thing to take a look at. Do you keep the promises that you make to yourself? This is a big part of integrity. These are the types of things we have to get super honest about. Because I see a lot of women spending time on the weekend or maybe at the end of each day, really taking into account how they want to show up for themselves the next day. But then we all know how that plays, right? The next day shows up and they're compromising and negotiating at every turn, meaning they're not showing up for any of the things they said they would do for themselves, Are you someone who is comfortable asking for what you need or don't need or want? Because for a lot of women, we, they don't feel comfortable being authentic. They don't feel comfortable speaking up and asking for what they need and want. So I mention all of these things because all of the answers to all of these questions is a level of deep honesty with where the gaps truly are. And I know that we have been kind of indoctrinated by the diet industry to exclusively focus on diet and exercise when it comes to improving our health. And those things are way easier to focus on than the things I just previously mentioned. But if you don't learn to address your belief systems, and why you do the things you do, you will spend a lifetime in a spin cycle of starting and stopping with new diet and exercise programs. Because you keep treating the outcome as if you can create a sustainable outcome by just addressing those two things. And I am just here to tell you that is just simply not true. And I have seen this play out so many times, and so have you. Whether it's in your own life or it's in the lives of women around you. Right? We, we sign up for the new diet. We sign up for the new exercise program. We're all in for a few weeks. We might create some amazing change. And then it all starts to unravel over time. Why is that? Because we didn't look at the foundation. We didn't get to the root of the problem. So integrity is absolutely a practice of being honest, radically honest with yourself. And the second part of that definition is an uncompromising adherence to strong values. So integrity is an uncompromising adherence to strong values. Do you know what you value? Are you are you taking those values and turning them into time? Meaning, if I was going to look at your schedule today, would it be very clear to me what you value? A lot of my clients come to work with me saying 
that they want to take care of this extra weight they have, or they want to improve their energy levels, or they want to get stronger. But after coaching them for a few weeks, what always comes out in the wash is the real reason every client comes to work with me is because they want to get themselves out of what I call integrity pain. What is integrity pain? Well, it's not adhering to your own value system. It is the emotional and physical pain that is a direct result of your actions being massively misaligned with what you really deeply value and say it is that you want for your life. And when I mention this concept to women, integrity pain, and I explain what it is, I've never had a woman say she doesn't understand what that is (laughs) because they've all felt it. Living your life misaligned from who you truly are and what you truly want is so uncomfortable. So what do we have to do to get out of integrity pain? Well, first and foremost, you have to even, you have to know what your values are. What is guiding your navigational beacon? And what I see so often is someone else's values. A woman is using someone else's values to kind of dictate her direction. And that never feels good. It might feel good temporarily because you don't really have to make any decisions. You don't have to think for yourself. But over the long run, it is so uncomfortable. It starts to feel like that itchy sweater that you just want to take off. At our core, we want to be (laughs) self-directed. We want to feel that we can make confident decisions about our own life. And that's really the opposite of what I see so many women doing in the health arena. They're not going through programs and processes that really teach them how to make decisions for themselves. They're signing up for things that are creating a sort of a dependence on them staying attached to that set of rules and regulations, even though they may outgrow it or maybe it never fit. We also get ourselves out of integrity pain by aligning our schedules, how we spend our time, with what we say we value, right? So we can go to bed at night feeling really at peace with how we showed up. I hear a lot of women saying that they value health. In fact, I don't know that I've ever had a client when I ask her, when we go through a values exercise of trying to get clear on her top three to five values, I've never had a client that health wasn't one of those values. They may say it a little bit differently, but health is always one of the values for most women I work with. And yet, when we look at their schedule, or their calendar, or how they're organizing themselves, you would never know that to be true because I don't see them carving out time for themselves. And of course, that creates a lot of integrity pain. And I also see integrity pain coming from using measurements of progress that are not really aligned with how a woman defines health. And a great example of this, which I think a lot of you will be able to identify with, is I hear women saying all the time that health means more to them than a number on the scale. So health to them means waking up in the morning and feeling excited about their day. Health means going through all of the activities of their day and feeling like their body and mind can support them in really helpful ways. Health means having the confidence to go after what they want and feeling confident that their bodies can support them in that endeavor and that they can, you know, work their way through the self-doubt that may show up. 
So health is so much bigger than the number on the scale, but how are women, what are women using to measure their progress along their health journey? They're using the scale and exclusively the scale. That's the only thing they're using to measure their progress. And to me, that creates a high level of integrity pain because we're using a measure of progress that is completely misaligned with how we even define health. Now, please don't hear me saying, stop using the scale, right? I'm not attached to you using or not using the scale. But does it make sense based on the way that you think about improving health, what health means to you? And are you using the scale in a healthy way? That's a whole nother conversation. I've done lots of podcasts on (laughs) how to use the scale in healthy ways. And this isn't really a scale conversation. What I really want to point out here and have you kind of inquire about is how am I measuring progress along my health journey? And does that make sense based on how I define health? All right, the second definition of integrity that I want to mention here today is the state of being whole, entire, undiminished, undivided. So another piece of getting out of integrity pain and learning how to live in integrity with yourself is learning how to see yourself as a multidimensional and dynamic being. What the heck does that mean? Well, multidimensional means you are not just a body. Health is not just physical. There are so many elements to the health equation that are not going to be addressed through diet and exercise alone. And saying that you are a dynamic being means that you are constantly evolving as a human throughout your lifetime. So what you need to do to honor your health also evolves throughout your lifetime. And yet that is not the way improving health is sold to us, right? It's always this sort of, again, very narrow pathway of eating and moving in a particular way. And I always argue that, you know, dieting, Being on a diet, which I define a diet as a list of rules and regulations established by somebody outside of yourself, right? And diet could mean something else entirely, right? There's lots of renditions of diet. But the type of dieting I'm referring to here are the protocols that other people are writing for you. And it's a sort of an act of following instructions, right? Abiding by those rules and regulations rather than learning how to be self-directed. Now, for some people, certain diets can be a gateway to learning how to be self-directed. I absolutely honor and see that. However, I feel that the majority of women are using dieting so they don't have to think for themselves and they don't have to learn about themselves. They don't have to go in and do the deeper work, which, of course, based on everything I've said to this point, is a problem. And largely, the diet industry focuses on physicality only, like I said at the very beginning of this podcast today. So it divides your wholeness. It's focused on you achieving a certain outcome in your physicality, regardless of other dimensions of health. So what do I mean by other dimensions of health? Well, how does this diet affect relationships? How are you managing your mindset? What are the other things that are contributing to you even needing to feel like you need to go on a diet? Anytime we divide ourselves from the wholeness of who we are, we are not in integrity. 
So I think that when we purely focus on physical health while dismissing mental and emotional health, relationship health, spiritual health, all these other pieces, we again get ourselves into a space of integrity pain and wonder why, okay, I lost the 30 pounds, but I'm not happy. I still don't feel great. I'm not, I still don't have confidence. I still don't fill in the blank. Right, because you approached health as a very divided thing. There is a way to reach that goal and stay very aware and honor the wholeness of who you are. So one other thing I want to mention in this conversation around integrity is you can, I, don't, I can't talk about integrity and not mention Brene Brown <laughs> because I feel like she really has so many beautiful reminders about what integrity is. And I feel like she, she preaches integrity. She teaches integrity. Her research is all about how to get into integrity with ourselves. And a lot of you have probably heard this quote before, but I'm going to just state it here because it is such a good one in this conversation. Brene Brown says, integrity is choosing courage over comfort Choosing what is right over what is fun, fast, or easy, and choosing to practice our values rather than simply professing them. So integrity requires courage to go after what you truly want, to be a fully expressed human. And to be a fully expressed human, I'm willing to bet you're going to have to go against the tide. You're going to have to maybe disappoint some people. You're going to have to be willing to let other people be uncomfortable with your decisions. Because you will make decisions, hopefully, right, that that feel so honest and true to who you are, that massively improve your health, but other people in your life may not understand those decisions. Can you be with that discomfort? And I will tell you, for a lot of women I work with, that answer is no. And the answer is no because they have no practice. They have been living their whole life in the pursuit of trying to make everybody comfortable with their decisions. And that's a losing game. Because you will never make everybody satisfied, but we convince ourselves that we can. And then in that pursuit, we completely lose ourselves and wonder why we feel so misaligned and so out of integrity with who we are as a human. And again, choosing fun, fast, or easy, like Brene mentions in that quote, it's so much more tempting than choosing what is right for your life, right? Because fun, fast, and easy, it it, it gratifies us quickly, but it doesn't gratify us over the long run. And so this circles all the way back to those questions I asked at the start of the podcast. What is your deeper work? Where are you truly out of integrity with yourself? Are you practicing your values or are you simply professing them? Health is important to me. Awesome. How are you showing up to exemplify that that is true? Not to me, not to the people around you exemplify, but to yourself. So here's a few questions I'm going to leave you with today on this conversation of integrity, because this is a big conversation. A few questions to consider. Do you currently like who you are, what you do, in other words, how you behave? And do you like the reasons for why you do the things you do? Because if you can answer a hearty yes to those questions, I would say you are definitely living in integrity with yourself. And if you can't answer a hearty yes, no shame or blame, no reason for judgment or to be an ass to yourself. But what a great thing to know. 
So what do we need to do to make that a hearty yes? We're going to be answering a lot of that inside this workshop. Women's Health Reimagined next week. Another question. What do you know needs to be done to get out of integrity pain? Because you know. You might be convincing yourself you don't know. You might be telling yourself things like, I'm overwhelmed, I'm confused, I just don't know. But you know. What if you had to know? What do you know needs to be done to feel more at peace with how you are living your life? That's a big question. The answers are there. But what you need to do to implement those answers, that can be tricky (laughs) because that's where we get confronted with all our belief systems, right? And why we can't do it and why we shouldn't do it and all the people we're going to make unhappy if we decide to do it. But all those things that you're not doing, that you know you need to be doing in order to be in integrity with yourself are costing you your health. By not doing those things, it is taking a toll on your health. So you can convince yourself it's just about eating better. It's just about exercising more. But there's usually a lot more underneath that. Jobs we've been in for a really long time that are sucking our soul. Relationships that we potentially need to let go of or pursue. That may be the relationship with ourselves. I never let go of the relationship you have with yourself. That is not at all what I'm saying. But a lot of women don't have a relationship with themselves because they don't make time for it. Maybe there's a creative endeavor you've always wanted to make time for, but you keep telling yourself you don't have time. Your relationship with food very well may be a challenge for you. But it's not the food that's really the problem. It's why you're eating the food. Why you're not nourishing yourself in a way that you know you could be. What's driving your current relationship with food? What is driving your inability to move your body every day even though you keep telling yourself you will? So this is the work I do. This is what I help women do. I help them get out of integrity pain. And again, we're going to be doing a deep dive into all of these things next week in the Women's Health Reimagined free masterclass. There's three different days to choose from. So head on over to graceandgrit.com forward slash reimagine. If this podcast, if this message, if this conversation resonated for you, I will give you some very tangible things you can start doing to bring yourself back into integrity with yourself. And I will help you expand your definition of health, which sounds to some women overwhelming, but I promise you when you expand your definition of health, it's actually such a relief because you start to see why cookie cutter protocols have never really fit you and why they don't feel good after the first few weeks or months that you engage with them. So do not miss this workshop. I promise I always show up with my A-game. I love teaching these workshops. And I will give you some very tangible skill sets that you can start applying immediately. So graceandgrit.com forward slash reimagine. I hope I will see you there. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Grace and Grit podcast. It is time to mend the fabric of the female health story. And it starts with you taking radical responsibility for your own self-care. You are worth the effort. And with a little grace and grit, anything is possible.